I'm going to give you the benchmark lifts so that you know what it takes to throw 50 feet in high school. And we're going to start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from throwsuniversity.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better thrower, you wanna learn more about technique, you wanna learn what it takes to get stronger, you wanna learn what it takes to be faster in the circle and be a better shot putter, a better discus thrower, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So at Throws University, we get asked a question quite often about what does it take to become a 50 foot shot putter? And if we can think about it, the 50 foot mark is that, that benchmark where you go from being a novice thrower to all of a sudden now you're taking that next step towards becoming an elite shot putter at the high school level. And if, if we even take that step back a little bit further, once you throw 50 feet, it's like now you're starting to claw, now you're starting to claw forward. Once you hit that 55 foot mark, now you're, you're inching for 60 feet. But the 50 foot mark is like a welcome party. It's this big mark that once you achieve that, you really get the itch to become that next level shot putter. And a lot of athletes have come through our doors here asking like, hey, what do I need to do to get to that 50 foot mark? Because once I hit 50 feet, I know I can keep climbing to 55 and 60 feet. And so what we've done is we've taken all of the years that we've had with high school shoppers, with high school state champions, with high school all-Americans at the national level, and even the collegiate level shot putters, we've taken all of these years and all of this time and experience and put together benchmark movements. But how do we do this? Okay, first of all, we gotta think about what do you need to throw the shot far? If you're a glider, if you're a spinner, what do you need? We know that you have to have really good technique, but in the weight room, it's more about physical capability. It's a little bit more about improving your strength, your size, your explosiveness. So we know we're in a seven foot circle. We know that in that seven foot circle, we've got to create a tremendous amount of force in a very short time frame. We know that's going to take less than two seconds to execute that throw. And so now we've got to sit there and think, all right, there's a lot of coordination at a very, very high speed. There's a lot of intra and intermuscular coordination that goes into developing a big shot putter. There's a lot of strength that's going to be needed to provide stability while you're moving at a very high speed. There's a lot of upper body strength that goes into throwing the shot far. There's a lot of mobility that goes into throwing the shot far. There's a lot of leg strength that's needed. So all of these different aspects and attributes have to be understood. So now that we can take that step back and start to think about what are those key movements. And so what we did is we put together all of those key movements and now we're gonna provide those benchmark lifts so that you know what it takes to throw 50 feet. So when we talk about speed, we talk about mobility, we talk about having that nice stable shoulder girdle, the first thing that comes to mind is the snatch. And that's where we can pop into this right away. We know that in the snatch, there's a lot of strength that is needed right off the floor. There's also gonna be a little bit more coordination that's needed, it's a technical movement. And when we get our high school shot putters to start snatching, they start to think a little bit more technically. They start to think less like meatheads, they're still meatheads, but a little bit less like meatheads, and now they're starting to think a little bit more from that speed component, from that technique component, and now they're hitting those deeper positions with a rapid amount of force, and that's where the snatch comes into play, and that's why the snatch is so paramount for long-term success. If we can think about this, we've had athletes come through our doors who've never snatched before, and within that first year of snatching, all of a sudden they can add five, six, seven feet. I've had discussions with two-time Olympian, Amin Nikfar, who when he added Olympic lifts, the snatch, the clean, the jerk, to his training regimen, all of a sudden he went from a 16 and a half meter shot putter to a 19 meter shot putter. And that just shows you what the Olympic lifts can do. So right off the bat, we know that if you wanna throw 50 feet, you need to snatch about 175 pounds. So in kilos, we're talking about 80 
kilos. And that's a relatively decent number. It's not extremely difficult to get an individual to snatch 80 kilos or 175 pounds, especially a high school male, as long as the technique is ironed out and as long as the individual is motivated. So that takes us into our second lift and that's gonna be the clean. And this is something that's a little bit more consistent from program to program is most athletes, most throwers have done the clean in the past. But again, we're talking about a movement that's going to be a little bit heavier, but it's still gonna be a speed component. It's still gonna require a high rate of coordination. It's gonna happen very rapidly and it's also going to help with mobility. So it has a really good transfer over to the circle. And if we wanna throw 50 feet, in our experience here at Throws You, Anybody who can clean about 235 pounds is going to have the capability, the strength levels to throw 50 feet. Again, there's gonna be some outliers. There's gonna be some guys that are cleaning 275 and only throwing 50 feet. And there's gonna be other individuals that we've worked with who've only cleaned 205 pounds and still thrown 50 feet. So it's really dependent on an individual basis, but that 235 pound mark is a nice benchmark to work towards if you wanna throw 50 feet. That next lift is gonna be the bench press. And this is a movement that a lot of coaches will be afraid to really push. They wanna sit there and say, oh, well, does a bench press really correlate to a bigger throw? And I was fortunate enough to train with one of the greatest throws coaches of all time, Dr. Anatoly Bunderchuk, and he would study discus throwers and shot putters and look at their results and see that as their bench increased, so did their throw. And imagine that, you're on the finish of a throw, you're using your elbow extensors, you're using your pecs to finish at the front of the circle. Standing throws are impacted tremendously when your bench press goes up as well. And that benchmark number that we wanna hit with the bench press is gonna be 275 pounds. That's a decent bench press, but it's not extraordinary. There's a lot of high school freshmen even that can bench press close to 300 pounds. So hitting that 275 pound mark is really feasible as long as you're working hard, you're getting into the weight room and you're taking your training seriously. That next big lift is going to be the back squat. And we've got to make sure that we define what the back squat is. We're not looking for that classic American football back squat with the real wide stance in that quarter squat position. We don't care about that at all. That has minimal transfer to anything. What we're gonna look for is we wanna see a back squat with that high bar position, an upright trunk, and we wanna see the lifter get past 90 degrees. Full depth squats. We want our lower back to be mobile. We wanna target our quads, our hamstrings, our trunk to stay more upright. We wanna improve our mobility in our ankles. And that's what that high bar back squat's going to do. And in turn, as we train that movement with that very deep position, that's gonna transfer really well to the clean and the snatch. So that benchmark number is going to be a little bit lower than what most people are used to. But I challenge you, if you're an American football player and you love squatting to a quarter, a quarter squat with a ton of weight on, I wanna see you squat full depth with 300 pounds, and that's gonna set you up for that big throw at 50 feet. So before we get into that last exercise and that last benchmark number, if you want more information about these numbers specifically and about other distances, 55 feet, 60 feet, we've got a resource down below that you can pick up for $7, or you can head over to throwsuniversity.com and you can pick up our ultimate thrower's assessment book that has this entire document inside it to help you improve your training and your goals. Finally, that last exercise is going to be the front squat and that benchmark number is going to be 275 pounds. Now, front squat, a lot of high school kids love to cry about their wrists. They love to cry about their triceps and their lats being too tight, but I don't care. Work on your mobility. That's part of being an elite thrower. If you're struggling and that's too tight, then you should be doing mobility exercises to improve your wrist mobility, to improve your tricep lengthening, to improve your lats. And the more 
you do that mobility work, the more the front squat transfers to the clean, the more the front squat helps the back squat, the more your bench will improve because all of a sudden now you have more mobility in your shoulder girdle. So all of these numbers really pair together really well. And especially this front squat, if you hit this 275 front squat, you will smash 235 in the clean. You will smash it and that's gonna help you build a nice stable base to use this as a jumping point from going from these numbers at 50 feet to now blowing up and hitting 55 and 60 feet. So if you want more information about these benchmark numbers, click on the link down below or head over to throwsuniversity.com. If you need help improving your strength, you can head over to throwsuniversity.com and we can build you a custom strength training program. If you want more videos about strength training in regards to throwing, you can click on this video right here. Until next time, guys, peace.